a lot of people met violent ends, shootings, knifings, and fights, robberies, and just cold-blooded murders out on the trails that led into here. In 1863, on this site is the location of the hanging of George Ives. George Ives was a known road agent in the area. He was also the murderer of a young Dutchman by the name of Nicholas Tabal. After a three-day trial, they determined with a vote of 23 to 1 that George Ives was guilty. So they put Ives up on a dry goods box. They dropped the beam into the front of the cabin, run the rope over the beam, and with that, the miners kicked the box out from under his feet and broke his neck. They believed during the time that if they buried a murderer like that with his feet pointed in a different direction that he wouldn't be able to rise during the resurrection. They also put him in the vicinity of the victim so that the victim, they thought, would know that he had been avenged. 150 years after the fact, Bill Peterson, John Ellingson, and I, employees of the Montana Heritage Commission, had been out doing a research project. Mr. Peterson took photographs from outside the fence line of John Ellingson and I standing on either side of the historic marker of the Ives trial. However, we didn't appear in the photograph. We ended up, when we downloaded the camera, with getting a person that were not able to identify, and speculation about who it was, quite possibly Mr. Ives. <clears throat> but these are basically the photographs that were taken that night. Nobody seems to know exactly who that is or why they showed up on the camera. I think it's probably a high probability. I don't know who else would have been probably hanging out down here. And I'm not a, a camera guy, you know, too much to know about that stuff. Yeah, if you guys can figure out anything, how our camera would have malfunctioned, we'd like to know about it. <laughs>